everyone I thought it would be fun to have a go at this um, star picture I'm just fiddling with my camera one minute there we go um, it, I need to have the bit on the display that um, tells me how much battery is left in it this is my winter spazier gang um, by Rita Berman um, it's a really cute um, star picture with a little bird I thought we'd have a go at it um, now this isn't in her compilation seasons book but there is a similar picture with a hmm <laughs> there's definitely a similar picture might be the heart is quite similar and uh, others so we're, we're going to keep it quite simple and i'm going to start with the star itself i'm going to do a yellow base and then i'm going to do a darker yellow for some details and uh, yeah we'll work from there really. I'm using my Arteza Expert pencil so I've got a turmeric yellow. Now I've got two darker tones of yellowy brown and they're sort of, and start colouring, they're sort of like a Naples or an ochre colour, I don't know what they're called, I'll look when I grab them. So but what I'm trying to say is if you're using a different set then uh, you want some darker ones. I thought the sort of more goldy browns, the Naples and the ochres, were better for this than the more orangey yellows, um, you know, going towards... Hmm, I'm not sure what colours, like the um, dark cadmium yellows and the polychromos or something, I thought wouldn't quite be right. I wanted it to look a bit more gold. Now my idea here is just to try and get a base coat of yellow. I don't want to press too hard. I don't want to burnish it down into the paper. I want to leave some um, tooth in the paper ready for my other layers of colour, which aren't going to go over the whole thing, but just in certain areas to sort of highlight some parts of it. You can um, choose how to do this. Now one way I'm going to tell you about that I'm not going to do would be to put your darker colour into the background so all the bits that are background like sort of here and behind these flowers and things you could do with the darker yellow. I thought about doing that but I, there's a lot here without background so I thought it wouldn't quite work. So what we're going to do is we're just going to deal with that each little section at a time and uh, do something with that to make it sort of stand out a little bit. Um, rather than just keeping any of them plain. Gosh, it's cold in here today. I should have grabbed a cardigan. Um, so the desk feels really cold on my arms. Right, I think I am just about done there with that one. You notice I haven't done the very outside. I realise I'm not very far in. I'm going to have to come in a bit closer in a minute. Um, the very outside is going to be done slightly differently. Now I've got these two yellows which I'm going to choose between. I've got a yellow ochre and a honey. I think although the honey is a bit more orangey, I think I'm going to choose that. I think it's going to stand out a little bit more than the ochre. I think that's what I'm going to do. I am going to come in closer because of all the detailing in the picture. You need to be able to see what I'm doing. So we'll sort of deal with each point of the star at a time. Let's come in for you. There we go. I think that's probably close enough. So we've got this one first. As I say, it's tempting to make the background darker because that's probably how it would be. But we're not going to. We're going to colour the um, smaller details. Now, you can um, vary the amount of colour you put down. So you could make the leaves a little darker at the tip or the base or whatever. But because it's really small, I'm just going to colour it in hard. Well, not hard, but in a block with no shading. I might shade that bit. It's quite hard to shade with them um, yellow, anyway. Okay, so there's most of that section. We've got these leaves coming down here. So we'll move on to these. Again, I'm going to slightly fade it towards the tip, but I want to make sure that you can see that it's a different colour to the outside, to the um, background bit. So it's not massive. And these berries, as much as I love doing berries really intricately, I'm not. They're too small. So you see, I'm trying to layer up more at the bottom than at the top. I'm not sure what this bit is. I think I'll just treat it as if it's half a leaf. Like that. And keep 
going through. Now these circles I'm going to try to make them darker on the outside than the inside. It's quite difficult because they're so small. The really little ones I'm just going to colour over. Now I've got a leaf here again. I've got some sort of seed pods up here, look. Um, hmm, I'll have a think about those. So it's afternoon. I usually record in the mornings, but I was out this morning. I went into town. I'm going to make it a little bit darker at the bottom and the top and then sort of fade it towards the middle I think. Um, in the sort of first full week of December our the church in the centre of town has a Christmas tree festival so uh, I went to that. It's open all week and uh, basically um, these I'm going to try and fade towards the middle a little bit. Um, you can't see them although there we go. So Christmas trees are placed in there, um, companies and charities and schools, nurseries, that sort of thing. They all decorate their own tree with them. Um, also different um, things that may be relevant to their cause or um, not, you know, or just bright and cheerful trees so it's lots of fun having a look around there with different colour lights on the tr the church is kept quite dark so the lights shine it's really nice I saw someone I knew had a bit of a natter with a couple of people actually so that was nice so it's all part of getting ready for Christmas it's a little bit early really um being as it's only the 6th of December but they um they they don't have them in for long because they have all their services and things they have to have room in the church for that so uh, that was that was that was rather nice, and I did a little bit of Christmas shopping, not much, just a few things. <coughs> Excuse me. I think with this bit, I'm going to um, I'm going to start here. I make it darker here and fade it. So the actual outside bit where there's that extra line probably won't have any of this colour on at all. So it's rather fun feeling a bit more Christmassy. Christmas colouring helps, of course. Bright, cheerful and sparkly. It's always the way, I think. So these pages by Rita, I think, are rather fun because you can do a background if you wish, but you don't have to. It can be quite quick to do these pictures. Her books are a little bit smaller than some as well, so they are a bit quicker anyway. And uh, I think that can be attractive to people who don't have a lot of time. Some people are quite happy to sit and have a picture part of the way coloured, sitting there for a while and just going back to it and back to it. But I know some people like to get it done, really, and move on to the next one. I'm going to make it darker on the edges and then lighter towards the middle on this one. So, you know, it's all... Um, hmm, I've got two edges here going from both sides. It's all very personal. And for me, it depends on my mood. Um, sometimes I like to... If I've got some time off and I've sort of got time in front of me where I'm not doing anything, having a long, a large picture to sit down at can be really good. But sometimes if I don't have much time, I still want that feeling of finishing something. So I grab something that's a little bit easier and smaller maybe, not always easier. There's that one, and this one. You don't have to do it identically to me. If you feel there's a sort of way of colouring that you think would suit you better. So this one I'm going from dark, it's quite similar to this one, dark near the bottom, lighter towards it, probably more like this one actually this one um, and of course you don't have to do this in a sort of gold colour you could use greys and make it silvery or you could um, in fact use any colour you wish at all I think red would be quite nice but I did a heart there's a heart um, in the end of this book which is also in Rita's compilation book um, Seasons and uh, I did that one in red very similarly to this um, style of you know, colouring the colouring it in. So I wanted to do something different f for this one. So 
so that's why I'm doing it like this. I've got, hmm, I've got a few ideas of uh, ways to make it sparkle a bit more. So it should be fun. Now this, oh, we haven't, we, I was going to move on to the central piece, but let's do these last two bits first. So these circles, I'm going to try and go around the edge and fade to the middle. You can do that with these bigger ones, just by putting more layers on the edge and none in the centre. The little, the smaller ones are a bit more tricky. Just do the best you can. Yeah, it's quite busy in town, but normally I'm out a lot earlier than I was. The festival didn't start till 10. I actually didn't end up leaving till 10 because I had to make some phone calls. Try and sort out kitchen stuff. Ooh. I thought the kitchen work was going to be finished yesterday, but no. Unfortunately, something that was ordered was the wrong size. Now this one's a bit of a challenge. I think I'm just going to do a little bit of the circle at the end of each twirl. And uh, leave it as that. And do that one. So for the centre bit, I'm going to just sharpen my pencil. Let's move it all into shop for you. Now what we're going to do is look at the loops. I'm trying to work out where it starts. Here. So we're going to make it darker on each edge, a bit lighter towards the middle of each loop. Arc, arc, it's like a rainbow, isn't it? Arc. And just work our way around. Now, Rita's um, compilation book has got all the seasons in it, whereas this one is only winter. Um, both books are really good. Um, some people say the compilation book, because it's got um, her better pictures from the um, single books, it's better value. Um, you get repeated pictures, of course, um, if you have all of them. Um, but um, I'm lucky enough to have them all, and uh, I like them all. Um, this one, as I say, isn't in the compilation book, and I really like it. Some of the ones in the compilation book I wouldn't have picked myself for the book, but you know, it's uh, it's interesting. But it just means that I get to colour some of them twice, which is great. I've nearly finished all of the winter book pictures in the compilation book, um, because last Christmas I didn't. I only had one or two pages left in Johanna's Christmas, so once I finished that, my only other Christmas book would pictures were in Rita's so I did nearly all of them. This year I again haven't got another copy of Jana's Christmas because I've had two. I've got a couple of her Christmas pictures in the planner, four in fact which is great fun. And um, but um, I've also got a few other Christmas books as well so I've got plenty to keep me going Christmas wise. I actually yesterday because I'd been expecting workmen in and they didn't come Oh, they did come, and uh, but they couldn't work, and it was all a bit. Ugh. I um I was colouring most of the day, and I managed to do nine Christmas pictures, which was great fun. And most of my photographed, and I um they go up on my Facebook. So we'll come out now, and you can have a look at the effect of that on the star. You see, now around this edge, I'm going to add some. I can't decide whether to use gold metallic, gold glitter or stickles. I shall decide later, soon enough. So we're going to do that later because it's going to be wet. Um, we're going to do this um, this piece next. Now, when, we, when I'm colouring um, sort of winter um, leafy bits, I always think of them as being like evergreens, a bit like this. So I tend to go for more of a pine green type colour. Let's see what we've got here. I think I'm going to actually use the jade green. It's quite a dark green. I think it might work well. It might sort of set off the yellow better. It's quite pale, the yellow, isn't it? So I'm going to just fade it towards the tip of each of the leaves. Like that. 
I naturally sort of tend to colour darker nearer the sort of branch or stem, whatever you might call it. And I think that's because I would expect it to be darker there because there'd be more shadow. And these are sort of stretched away from the branch, so they'd be more light to catch the light and be a bit lighter. So that's, that's sort of my thinking, really. Now, I've got this funny bit here, which is catching my eye. I'm trying to think about what to do for that as I colour the rest. And we've also got this little bird to colour. It's looking cute. Think about what to do for him. I've just coloured that in the same way as the leaves, really. Now, if you don't like it being so pale at the end, you could use a pale of green to finish off the tip. I don't really have one in this set. I was thinking more of the um, really pale... There's a pale... Is it green-grey or pale sage or something in the um, prismas? That sort of pale green would could do well. But, oh, I've missed a few. There's one in here. And this one. It's sort of tempting to colour up a red to make it look really Christmassy colours, but I think what I will do is I'll colour him as a robin. So we'll do some red. I'm going to start with the red. I'm going to use, it's called rose red, and I'm going to do it for the berries. And then we'll also do it for the bird. And it will add a nice bit of bright Christmassy colour. I wonder where the red in Christmas comes from. I guess it's Father Christmas's outfit, which rumour has it. Oh. I don't know if that was a good idea. <laughs> Never mind. Rumour has it, I don't know if it's right, that um, that it, it was made up by Coca-Cola. Before Coca-Cola, um, Father Christmas's coat was green. But I don't know. Sometimes these tales you hear, not too sure if it's right. So we're doing the red on a robin. It goes right up to the head. I think we'll just do that dark. It'll look cute. In fact, I think we'll do our red all the way up to this pattern bit. It will sort of make sense with the way the bird's drawn then. I won't do it on those circles. We'd colour those the same as this layer. Now, because it's um, not exactly a robin, we don't need to go exactly right. Now Robin has grey and black, so I'm going to use grey next. I'm going to use the elephant grey. And I'm going to do it for these circles here first. Try to make sure I get enough down so you can see it. And then for these... And then we'll do some brown for the wing, I think. And it will look a bit robin-y. You could do all red and turn it into a red cardinal. I know um, some people in the USA really love those. Not a bird that we get here in the UK ever. I know it isn't, I found out it's not across all of USA, only some parts, but people still love them, which is absolutely fair because they are gorgeous. I'm going to go for quite a dark brown because in this um, set, you really get like ready browns and then honey type colours so the espresso brown now I don't want it really really dark so I'm going to try and go lightly with it on the tail I would still want it a little bit darker here and lighter towards that grey bit but I'm just trying not to do it too dark same here a little flower on the bird's wing and I'm trying to decide what to do with that. I could just make it red. I could make it look like a flower. I'm going to do the background quite intensely dark so the flower stands out whatever colour it's going to be. And there we go. I think, I think I am going to do it red. 
So we'll use the rose red that we've already used. It looks quite pink here, but once we lay it down here, it'll be much darker. I'm going to try and fade towards the end of the petals. But I am actually gone down quite dark. And then the centre we'll do with a little bit of yellow. I think I'm going to use the turmeric yellow. I see that star and there's another star over here. Now I don't want to leave it just like that, I want to do a little bit of a background on the page before I go in with some pens. Um, I want to keep it fairly simple, I'm trying to have a little look. I'm going to go use past soft pastels, so I think, oops, oh, I can't get them, pick them up. I think the best thing for me to do is to open up my box and have a look and that will help me to think about what colours I might want to do. These are Mungio pastels. So looking at my picture and my pastels, so I could go for golds and browns, um, we could do, do some greens, we could mix it up and have a big mix of different colours. I'm just trying to find a clean sponge while I'm, here we go. Um, I'm thinking mixing it up might be rather nice. Um, would it work or would it be better with golds? I think we'll go with golds, I've decided. So I've shown you that before. Let's... Greens. Mm. Let's do green. Let's do green because then our star will stand out better. So I'm using this green here. I'm going to rub it onto my cloth, onto my... Um, washable makeup applicator. Now I don't want to get too many greasy fingerprints on the page so I'm going to hold the book in, on the bit that I'm not going to apply any pastel to. Now I'm going to try and apply a layer of this all over the background area. Now I need to be a little bit careful where I penciled because I'm not sure how smudgy these are going to be, these are tasers. So I don't want to um, sort of smudge the red or the yellow into it. I don't think the yellow will smudge. I'm not too worried about going over these lines because I am going to be color covering them over with a coloured gel pen, I think, is the best thing to use. Now don't worry if it isn't really even, because I'm thinking forest background, you know, we've got this bit of leaf, it's hanging in a tree, the star is hanging in a tree, maybe we've got all lots of star, lots of trees in the background, so don't worry too much about it being um, sort of splodgy, because if there was trees there'd be leaves, there'd be denser areas and less dense areas, so it's fine and also I'm going to do something else on it in a bit where um, it's actually going to purposely look uneven so that it won't, it will disguise your unevenness or make it look intentional but I'm trying to get a fairly decent layer down to be honest but sometimes you get patchy bits where there's grease on the paper um, it can you can erase and reapply. Um, the grease sort of comes up with an eraser. So if you do want to try and get a really flat, um, but another tip is to just keep reapplying and reapplying, and eventually it just goes in. But because I'm doing a round and round movement, that can create an unevenness as well. But as I said, that's okay. Now, of course, if you don't want to do a background, you don't have to do a background. It isn't necessary to do one on every single picture, I don't think. there It can feel like there's pressure to do one on every picture. Like, maybe you think it's not finished properly, if it hasn't got one, but actually, it can depend very much on the picture. And I see, oh, that's my elbow. 
I see a lot of pictures without backgrounds that are absolutely beautiful. There's no need to always do one. But pastels is a great quick way of doing it. So uh, that is um, why I like them. If I tried to create this with pencil, it would take me hours or maybe even not more. And I've got some green here into the red, into the yellow, but I'm not going to worry. It, I didn't really want to do that, but it's done now. I can't, you can erase it gently, which I might try and do. If you are um, applying pastel over Prismacolors, be careful because they are very smudgy. So they will smudge into the pastel. Um, so think about what effect you want and whether you, you want that or not. I'm going to, um, I do this quite a lot, get a darker green. Um, it's going to quite a dark green actually. Okay, and I'm going to put a bit in the corners. Oh, it's my elbow again. It doesn't hurt, don't worry. I think I've got a very high paint threshold. I uh, don't... Things like that don't worry me. Or I'm easily distracted, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> A bit messy now. Now, if you want it to look really rough and ready, there it is, or you can go back over with the original green and try and make a neater, more blended job of it. Just keep blending away with your um, cotton piece, whatever you can use, disposable. Um, makeup pads which I used to use but I just decided I thought was a bit wasteful so these go in the washing machine what I always do is I use I hand wash them first to get the worst of the pastel out because I don't want it in my washing <laughs> and um, then I put them in the bag that they come in um, they come in a bag like this so I put them in the washing machine in that and then they don't get stuck inside the washing machine which is always a risk when you've got small things. And then when they come out I dry them on my radiator. Um, even in the summer I just put them on the radiator. It's a good place for them to dry even when the radiator isn't on. And, uh, and dry them like that. Now I feel that I'm happier with this as I'm adding another layer of the lighter colour. You may have felt there was enough already on yours if you're um, following along or, um, you know, it's very personal. It obviously takes a little bit longer, but that's okay. Sometimes it's worth just spending a little bit more time just getting it looking just so. And I think, I feel that this colour was the right choice because it's going to help the star to stand out. Okay. I am done with that now. I'm just going to put those pastels away. I have before now not put them away and knocked them with my elbow and they went all over the carpet. I am not. don't want to do that this time. So I will just slide them into the case. Oh, there we go. Now I'm going to use some pens. I've got my Stardust Metallic. I think that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to go, oops, take out the yellow one, which is number 551. And I'm going to use that to go around the star. Just tearing out a piece of paper to lean on because um, I don't want to put my hand down in the green pastel and spread it all over the place. I think, actually, before I start, I'm just going to grab my Tombow Mono. I'm just going to erase the green from the star 
just because I think it might just mix with the gel. I don't know for sure, but it doesn't, it's very, very easy to erase. So uh, I'm just going to do, my husband is home today and he's just going downstairs and I'm wondering whether he's either making me a cup of coffee or whether there's a parcel delivery and he's going to investigate. But I don't know. Well, it sounds like we had some post. He's opening a letter, I can hear. So if he's opening it, it's probably not anything very exciting. It's probably some junk mail. There we go. There's also a little bit of green on the tummy of our bird that I'm just going to try and get off. That's it. And a little bit here. Because the pastel was the last layer, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to just pick up and erase. Now I'm going to give that all a brush. Get rid of all those bits. There we go. Now I'm going to go in with my pen. So this is a metallic pen, so it's not going to be glittery, it's just going to be nice and bright. I'm hoping it will help the star to show up. Which is, it is indeed. So that's lovely fun. And obviously I am going to go all the way around the edge with this. Now, what do we have? We've got some bits of detailing here. And I've got to think about what colour I might want to do those. I think I may do them the same. It might just sort of make sense to tie it all together and do them all the same. Now, you could, if you wish, do some glittery pen or some metallic pen on the berries. I've just realised that the this star is yellow and this star is yellow but this one isn't. But I think I'm going to go over them with this pen so I don't think it matters. But the rest of the stuff in the sky, I say stuff, <laughs> it looks like snowflakes to me so I don't think they would be gold. So I think if we do all the stars in this gold then we'll do a different colour for our snowflakes. I might have to turn the book around because we're also going to smudge this pen when we do the bit at the top. Now, often with snowflakes, I might do them as a blue sort of glitter or blue pen, but I think in this case, I don't want to add a blue into this colour scheme we've got our gold and green and red and I'm thinking I really want to add blue it doesn't feel very it's wintry but it doesn't feel Christmassy so I'm gonna do I could do it silver I think might be a better idea so that might be what I do um, I'm gonna turn my book I don't normally like turning my book too much but um, I prefer to colour the right way out, but to do this without smudging, I think this is the safest way. Whoops, I really need to go out of the lines there, didn't I? And uh, yeah, so I need to remember to do the stars with this. I really like these metallic colours. This is such a pretty colour. I don't know how easy it is to see on camera. Um, uh, although I did, um, someone was you getting some, what was it, um, a hoo hoo um, glitter pens and said they were really good. I don't, I've never had that brand. She said she had the Sakura ones, which are this brand, but um, she liked those. I've just um, drawn right in the middle of the page in completely the wrong place there. As the doorbell went, I don't know if you heard it, it made me jump. Um, I'm going to just... Now, I think it's snow, isn't it? It's going to have to be... I think we're going to use the silver. This is number 553. 
So I'm going to use this for all the snowflakes and the snow and uh, see how we go. It's quite a thick pen and these are quite fine details so I think we're going to lose some of the finer details but I don't, I'm not too worried. If you um, don't want to lose those fine details you may have to use a slightly thinner nibbed pen. Now here where it's marked in black if you miss the black dots it's actually a good thing because it helps it to stand out a little bit better. So I'm just trying to do them near and not necessarily on. Like where there's a circle let the outline show. So I think that was a parcel which will go. I think my husband had ordered something. Find out what it is in a minute. But we'll get this done. Get our sparkles done. As I say, that mistake there. Now sometimes when you put a a, pen, a gel pen on in the wrong place you can gently scratch it off. I don't know if I'm going to worry but you have to wait for it to be completely dry so it, the paint is sort of brittle. If I tried it now it would just smudge it and then it would be you need it to be quite thick to scratch it off you can't. So if I smudge it it's just be a disaster but to be honest I'm not that worried. It just adds a bit more shine to the page doesn't it? There's a lot going on here. I'm just going to dot around. I'm not going to try and do all of them. I think we can just add some shine. It's rather nice. I don't know if you can even see. Anyway. It's, uh, it's quite mesmerising, I think, doing little dots with a pen like this. It's fun. Although I do find oddly that when I'm using pen it gives me blisters and pencils don't. If I use pen a lot, so I've got a huge background I do in pen, I get blisters. I think it's because I don't lift off the page as much. With a pencil you have to lift off to sharpen and um, to sort of, t I turn the pencil to find a sharp end, edge on the, and things like that. Or you swap colour with pens not doing that so much. I mean, I'm going to get the red and just do a little outline on the berries. I'm not going to um, completely cover them in red. Um, I think that's the red. I need to just test it. Mm, it's quite pink. Oh. Just trying them out in a minute. No, this is the most, the closest to red, I think. Uh, no, that's gold. See, I wasn't sure if that was red. It's gold. We have sort of three shades of gold. This one is a sort of pinkish red. I'm just going to go around the edges of the berries. I'm not going to do those little dots by the tail because they're too narrow. But I think it would just give a little bit of extra shine. Could go around the leaves as well, but I think I'm going to leave it grass. I haven't got the right shade of green. Anyway, my green is a bit too. Oops, let's see that. There we go. So I am finished now. And I'm going to tilt it to the light. Hopefully, you'll be able to see the shine. There you go. Shining star. There. So that is me done. Thank you for watching. I hope that was some um, fun. We've got a bit of a mixed media picture going on. Um, one thing I could do to finish would be to get my gold stickles and put them all over the star to make it really, really shiny. I would love to do that, but I'm not going to because I haven't coloured the page behind or any pages through the book. I did it on a heart design. Um, I'll show you the heart design. This one. Um, in my other book and it looked really nice but I coloured all the pages either side of it so it didn't matter that it was really thick glue the page got slightly warped so I, it's not something I'm going to do now on this one but I do love my stickles and but you'd have to do it quite thinly and in a controlled manner so uh, I'm not going as I say I'm not going to do that on there but that is an idea for you I'm going to use my stickles a lot on postcards and and downloads and things like that I've got plenty of those and use them in small areas 
areas and spread them thinly. But anyway, that is me done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have a really lovely day and happy colouring.